The Filipinos may know it for its call center companies, same-sex marriage, favorable climate, and, well, kangaroos. But when it comes to its bilateral ties with the Philippines, Australia has so much more to offer. Coming out of the Australia Day celebration on January 26, this episode of Food Diplomacy revisits our relationship with the land down under while giving a one-on-one in Australian cuisine. the Shangri-La in Makati to meet the ambassador of Australia to the Philippines, Amanda Gorley. Hi, Amanda. Hi, so lovely to meet you me. yes. today. Thank uh, you so much. Ooh, I'm excited. It looks like they yeah, made a lot of food. Really <laughs> I am hungry. Okay, so you're ready to explain each and every one. So, Ambassador, this looks like a great spread. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you would call Australian cuisine? How would you define it? Well, I think Australian cuisine is very fresh and seasonal and also quite multicultural in its influences because, you know, we have a lot of different um, waves of migration into the country and all of those different communities have had an impact on the um, cuisine that we eat. Now, I wanted to veer toward the cheese. Yeah, so that is a feta cheese salad. Yeah. It's a very nice, uh, quite uh, salty taste. This These beets? are olives. Oh, olives. they're olives. They're Kalamata okay. olives. And Australia has, I think, one of the largest Greek expat communities in the world. Oh. We often eat a lot of um, Greek-inspired yeah. olives, feta, the Mediterranean sorts of foods. And These are um, prawns in a pesto-based sauce. A lot of the um, things that Australians would eat with their seafood would go very well with Philippine seafood products as well. And this one? This one looks like a very fresh corn and bean salad. It looks like a, almost a Mexican salad. Yes. Um, but it uses Australian ingredients and including really nice olive oil that is grown in Australia and uh -huh. produced in Australia. What do you yeah. not grow in Australia? <laughs> yeah. I feel like your climate is so diverse it that anything diverse. can survive You're there. right, because we do have a cold climate which enables uh -huh. us to produce certain types of wines and food and vegetables. And then we also have a subtropical and tropical climate as mm -hmm. well. So we can pretty much produce um, you know, Almost any, anything. Any, anything. Yeah. yeah that's and right. so this one was, like you said, the melon and the prosciutto. Yes. And, and what, the yeah. very Australian element to that is the macadamia nut. Australia oh. has one of the largest macadamia nut productions in the world. And this is another, another prawn, prawn dish. dish. And you can see the oranges on there. Those, this has an Asian look to it. This one uses our fresh citrus. We have an annual promotion of Australian citrus fruits, which is getting, ah. you know, it's a very big increasing market for us, the Philippines. I have to say, this is one of the healthier mm -hmm. uh, food diplomacy Good. meetings I've yeah. had. So that is very characteristic of Australia. And of course, we can't leave out the wine. Well, that's right. This is a lovely Riesling. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Australia has made a name for itself in terms of, you know, uh, celebrity chefs mm -hmm. and uh, the, the way they use their ingredients. We have had um, quite a number of celebrity chefs who've come from Asia, who mm -hmm. have Asian culture. It's a very fusion, fusion type cuisine, I think, where East meets West and yeah, lots of different influences. You have Tetsuya. You know Tetsuya? Mm, he's great. He's yeah. fantastic. He's very, um, very high profile. I'm already tasting a good mix of the different mm. textures and flavors. And uh, you were mentioning that this is uh, very characteristic of what you would eat in Australia. Mm, for sure. It tastes um, fresh. And I guess it benefits that Australia is close to the Philippines, so um, it doesn't uh, it's true. ruin I mean, the... That's the, right. The freshness of it all. Yeah, I mean, the, there's daily flights from Australia and uh, fresh products can get here very quickly mm -hmm. and be on the supermarket shelves mm -hmm. in, you know, less than a day. So it's quite uh, good from that point of view. So uh, aside from the, um, the agriculture sector of it, what other sectors are important for Australian companies here? Mm. Well, we have about 280 Australian companies that have a presence here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are in the uh, business process outsourcing sector. They employ around 30,000 Filipinos and mm -hmm. they would be doing a range of different 
jobs from voice services. And then we have, of course, you know, lots of services um, industry players, um, particularly in the education and mm. tourism sectors. So uh, we have a, a lot of Filipino students going to Australia to study at our universities or um, at vocational training mm -hmm. institutes. Um, and some of them go on scholarships, so the Australian government. How many Filipinos actually live in Australia? Um, it's about a quarter of a million. Okay. And it's growing. I mean, in our last census from 2016, the Philippines as an um, expat community went from number seven to number five. Wow. So more and more now you're seeing um, Filipino restaurants or food vans and that sort of thing mm -hmm. around town. So and Australia, how many Australians here? Well, it's hard to have a precise number because they tend to kind of blend into the community and they might live in remote parts of the country with mm. their family. In fact, you know, at the moment we have the Mayon volcano oh, erupting and we're wondering if there are any Australians Affected. who are in that area. Um, but there's probably about twenty to 30,000 Australians who live here in one mm. way or another. Defence is a huge... Yes. Well, we've, uh, initiative for your embassy. We Tell do. I mean, we've had um, a lot of cooperation between our two defence forces over the last six months because when the terrible siege in Marawi happened, uh, the Australian government wanted to provide as much support to the Philippines government as possible and um, that involved providing a couple of military aircraft that did surveillance um, reconnaissance over the city on a daily basis and provided the intelligence to the Philippine Armed Forces. I'm starting to see a lot more, I guess, leadership on the part of Australia in terms of this region. Mm. Um, some might say perhaps uh, because of the vacuum that the U.S. has left. Mm. Is, is that something you're seeing as well? Is that something that you've been asked to lead here in the Philippines and Southeast Asia? Definitely. I mean, the Australian government last year, late last year, released a foreign policy white paper which identifies this region as you know the most critical region for Australia, the Indo-Pacific Indo region. And, uh, we have a very strong interest in the security, the prosperity, and the developments that happen in this region. We've always stepped up for the Philippines, yeah. particularly in times of natural disaster, um, of which this country is sadly prone to quite a yeah. lot of natural disasters. But um, yeah, it's good to see us making um, a stronger um, effort in the military space as mm -hmm. well. And so, uh, and what other initiatives are you working on? Well, we are actually looking at hosting a an event in Clark in, in March, which will promote Clark as a destination for Australian companies mm. interested in uh, setting up in the Philippines. Um, and then we have a big function in May, which is the Australia-Philippines um, Friendship Day, which was created last year for the first time um, to mark the 70th anniversary of our bilateral relations. Australia was one of the first countries to recognise the Philippines as an independent nation after the Second World War. And um, last year when we marked it for the first time, we had an all day festival up um, on Bonifacio High Street. This year we're hoping to do something in Davao. All right, so now we are here in our main course and of course, uh, Ambassador, Australia is known for its beef. <laughs> it's that's meat. true. That's true. So tell us what we have here. Well, we have a range of different Australian meats here. Firstly, as you say, the beef. We've made a beef pie, which is mm -hmm. a very traditional Australian dish, a pie and sauce. It's mm -hmm. the sort of thing you would eat at a sporting match or um, in the school tuck shop, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and it's made with um, Australian grass-fed beef. And then we have a lamb, a rolled lamb, which is also from Australia, the lamb, and it's something that you know, we would share with our families over a Sunday get-together, that sort of thing. So it's stuffed with spinach and thyme, mm -hmm. and it's got uh, served with some uh, dried fruits that have been um, sort of marinated as well, I think, and some beans, so that's quite tasty. And then the meat over here is actually Philippine pork, but we've made a sauce with it using lemon myrtle oil, which is 
an Indigenous Australian product. It's got a strong citrus lemon flavour which mm -hmm. is infused into the gravy. Yeah, it's nice. In Australia, when you have lamb, you have to have mint jelly, my well, condiment of choice. And I should mention the wine oh, too, yeah. which is uh, Shiraz from South Australia as well, Grant Birch. There's quite a lot of Australian wine that's available here in the Philippines. Yeah, how well. popular is um, the wine culture here in the Philippines? Mm, There's a, a demand for Australian it's wine. It's very strong actually. I think uh, Filipinos are developing more of an appreciation of wine and they're looking for, you know, quality wine uh, that will complement the Philippine cuisine and mm -hmm. climate as well. Very good. Okay, so what else, what other um, initiatives that we didn't have been touched on yet? Well, we do have, you know, a lot of cooperation with the Philippines in, um, you know, the area of law enforcement mm. as well. So I have a number of Australian federal police who are based at the embassy and they work very closely with their Philippine counterparts on things like, you know, terrible child uh, sex crimes. What we do is work very closely with the Philippine police to try and target the operations that are happening here in the Philippines and to, you know, shut them down and to also arrest and target the, you know, organisers and mm -hmm. perpetrators and propagators of it in Australia as well. How much work do you think needs to be done in terms of the cyber aspect of it? Because that's, yeah. you know, that's huge. I that. think you, you just have to have the law enforcement agencies and the intelligence in each country working together to build mm -hmm. the picture and it takes a you know quite a lot of in-depth work sometimes undercover work to work out where these networks are and to and to be able to address them so what you can do is give women who are largely the people who are you know the so-called victims in the, in that um, situation give them more opportunities to mm -hmm. to pursue education and careers, the more educated and um, employable women are, the, the less vulnerable they are to that sort of, um, you know, prey, people preying on them in that way. Tell us about, I guess, uh, gender equality, of course, and not just gender equality, but um, sexual equality, because yeah. we saw that Australia just passed yeah. the same-sex marriage law. Well, for me, one of the great leaps forward by Australia last year was the introduction, finally, of um, you know, same-sex marriage for LGBTI. And it's really great to see Australia join um, the other countries, and I think there's about 30 or so in the world that have um, taken this step. And I was really interested when the president here mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago, uh, you know, sort of voiced support for the Philippines looking at that pathways. Dessert part, my favorite part, and yeah. this is a unique dish for the Australian culture. Tell us about That's it. That's right. That is a lamington. It's a sponge cake with okay. a jam filling, and it's then coated in uh, chocolate with coconut over the top. It is a sort of afternoon tea type treat that okay. we would. What kind of have. jam is it? Raspberry, normally. Okay. Yeah, we'll test if he's... And then we obviously we have um, coffee with it because mm. coffee is very well known in Australia. We don't like cheap and nasty coffee. We like real sort of espresso coffees and that largely comes back to the fact that you know we've had a lot of European migrants mm. in Australia over many years and they established uh, very good cafes in the inner cities of most of our cities and Australians got a taste for proper espresso coffee. But, um, we are increasingly getting really good coffee here available in Manila as well. Mm -hmm. um, I did recognize uh, Toby's estate when I first yeah. came here. I was surprised to see it. I said, yeah. oh, a Hasi coffee. Their baristas are trained in a very yeah. particular way and so the coffee comes out tasting a particular way. And this well. one was... Um, Pavlova. Yeah, Pavlova. Mm. This, is, uh, this is not unique to Australia, though. Well, it was... You've raised a sensitive question, no. though. There's a long-standing dispute between Australia and New Zealand about which country invented the Pavlova. And we, of course, would say it was Australia. 
Um, and it was invented um, when Anna Pavlova, the ballerina from mm. Russia, toured uh, Australia and New Zealand and a dessert was created in her honour. It's essentially a meringue with cream and fruits. This one is a deconstructed one. Interesting, I didn't realise that there was a debate. I'll have to try when I meet with the uh, Kiwi ambassador. Yeah, you'll have to have a story. We'll see which um, Pavlova stacks up um, the best, but mm. I'm sure they're both equally delicious. Well, Ambassador, this was such a wonderful mm. conversation. Thank you so mm. much for telling us more about Australian culture and sharing your food with us. Thank you, Annalisa. Okay, cheers. Thanks again. Cheers.